you know, one of the things I especially appreciate is that the whole idea of intentional communities is based on a premise that holds human beings in high regard, as if we actually can work well together and we can live in harmony with the planet and we can solve problems and especially we can honor personal sovereignty and group well-being by addressing what it means to be distinct and unified at the same time. And as I've said before, to me, this is the crux of the matter, whether it's in our interpersonal relationships, how to stay true to ourselves, honor the wholeness of each individual while being uh, in union with each other and um, or at any group of any size. I think that's what it's all about. And I'm deeply grateful uh, to and inspired by those taking leadership in forging ahead with these uh, new new communities. I said in the movie, and I, and I really mean it, that I really think we're here on earth to learn how to love, to master love at all levels. And to me, intentional communities uh, embody that probably more than anything that I can think of. The communities that we're particularly interested in are, in are shaped around loving care, care for oneself, for each other, uh, and for the land that we live on. And this is reflected, and you'll see today with the groups that, that will be visiting with us, that it's reflected in a dedication to sustainability and to communication, to mindfulness, to spirit, and especially to freedom and an ethic of non-violation uh, or do no harm. And I want to be very clear right at the beginning for anyone who sees this in the future that we're making a very clear distinction between true community, which we see as the voluntary gathering of sovereign beings, that is an intentional community, rather than the coercion and domination of communism or the deceptive uh, socialist manipulation of what Agenda 21 has taken to calling communitarianism. So let's don't be confused by similar words. But we're covering all aspects, food, energy, housing, education, for-profit, non-profit business creation. We've open sourced how we set up our non-profit organization. We're open sourcing our tax process. We're open sourcing everything from, from growing in ground to hoop houses to um, sustainable food infrastructure that can be built anywhere in the world, as well as the housing, the education model, open source education model has eight different components that cover everything from breaking down and identifying the new paradigm education models that are out there and the key components of those and integrating all those into individual lesson plans. It's all designed so that people can take it and use it in the way that they want and so that people can participate and make it better. And so we're designing it all as a global collaborative so that everybody can add their own ideas into it. And we've created the web infrastructure already. So as people start taking the things that we've developed and doing them differently, then we can add those into the global archive of open source information as well, so that it just continues to grow. Some of the technologies that we're using uh, are uh, based on a lot of Tesla's impulse technology, the John Bedini uh, way of charging batteries. We found methods to uh, repurpose lead acid batteries with uh, a pickling spice known as alum that turns them into a lead alkaline battery. And they, they hold about twice the density once you do that. Um, another thing, since we live here in the Northwest, that's really kind of amazing is repurposing piezoelectrics. Believe it or not, you can make uh, rain panels. So every time a drop hits the panel, it, it moves electrons. Wow. Uh, uh, another way of actually using that is uh, we, we found ways with chemicals through a lot of uh, John Hutchinson's work of uh, having a piezo and then having an active ion chemical to create an infinity battery, and a battery that runs forever. And I've got a four-year-old one here on site that uh, seems to be increasing in voltage over time. So it's really exciting. And I, I like to just share how we do that. Um, uh, we have an anode and a cathode, which are copper and magnesium. And we've been doing tests to get away from magnesium and use aluminum, and specifically using old pop or beer cans because they're already sealed and you can cook the two ingredients together. 
And so the piezoelectric is cream of tartar and the active <laughs> ion is Epsom salts minus the water. So you cook the two ingredients together and you've got a battery that, that runs itself uh, pretty much forever. And technically it's not a battery, but uh, I have and know some people that uh, have taken this technology and ran with it, uh, made enough of them to make a 12 volt array and then have it uh, charge uh, with a comparator circuit, charge a giant cap bank. And then they'll put them into their chicken coops that run a, a light. So you can go in there, flip a switch, you begin to drain from the cap bank the charge that you've stored, which runs a light maybe 10, 12 minutes. But that's enough to do everything you have to do in the chicken coop and then uh, flip the switch off and it begins to charge right back up again. So a lot of these technologies also involve us uh, using energy very differently. And then on top of that, just to chime in very quickly, you know, these opportunities as people are able to see and experience them and We've even talked about putting them into tiny home applications because you could take a whole wall and then create a sustainable solution. So the, the cool thing about that is, is that it's moving into these new different kinds of economic models um, where we show our community where the gaps are that we can get the community involved in supporting it. And so this is really becomes a stepping stone for helping us support these ideas and moving them out. So even though we may be using traditional commerce, you know, these different stepping stones around benefit companies and B Corps become a pathway in, and then we're able to take folks down the rabbit hole around sovereignty. We determined to establish the New Earth Nation not as another uh, community model, but more as an umbrella and a platform um, which would be the ground of being upon which conscious communities can legitimately uh, manifest for the first time in history. What I mean by that is very simple. The existing models that have been exploring, like Dam and Her and Findhorn and so on, and very courageously so, have been pioneers in, this, in these ventures, they are still indentured to the state and to the crown. This is a very important distinction to understand. So ultimately they are not self-determining. They are not uh, sovereign in that sense. And if we are to claim absolute sovereignty, we have to be able to know how to reverse engineer the invisible contracts that exist between communities and governments. The only thing that is fundamentally real are people and planet, relationships, that's you and me, our family, our friends, and the planet that we inhabit our relationship with nature, with trees and the ocean and the sky. If you really get that, and you understand that we have natural, divine, intrinsic birthright, we are directly connected to source, we don't need to be asking permission, we don't need to be filling out forms, we don't need to be shuffling along in queues, we don't need to be molested as we go about our business. Our business should be the pursuit of bliss. And that is what the New Earth Nation is absolutely determining is our birthright. And we are manifesting the platform upon which any number of communities around the world can begin to fold.